What's up guys, it's Eric from Rarecaney and welcome back to another countdown video and today we are counting down the top 5 worst cards from Ultra Prism. So we actually did do a countdown of the best cards, so if you want to see a more optimistic video, I will have a link below in the description for you to check that out. But today we are talking about the absolute worst cards that came out of this set. You know, with every set there's normally a bunch of stuff to get excited about, but there's usually also a few duds that made it, made their way into the set. And Ultra Prism is no exception, but I will say this, luckily Ultra Prism uh, did did a much better job at this than let's say Crimson Invasion the set prior to this. I actually really had to uh, you know comb through a lot of cards in Crimson Invasion that were terrible to decide on a list but for this one it was much more difficult. Luckily most of the cards in the set I think were generally more decent but there were still definitely five that we're going to talk about today that stuck out to me. And before we get much further, I just want to go over a few guidelines to keep in mind as we go through this countdown. The first of which is that only final evolutions and non-evolving Pokemon are going to be eligible for this list. So what that means is something like the new Torterra that came out of Ultra Prism is eligible to be on this list, but Turtwig is not. It's just because, you know, if we allow pre-evolutions, we'd have a bunch of, you know, 60, 70 hit point basics that do 10 damage for one energy, which, you know, that's... Not very fun to watch. <laughs> so all pre-evolutions are going to be exempt for this. Only final evolutions and non-evolving basics like I mentioned. And the other thing to keep in mind for this video is that reprints of cards already in the existing format are going to be ineligible to appear on this list. So what that means is cards like the new Secret Rare, Solgaleo GX, and Lunala GX, or Pokemon Fan Club that we already have in the current format are not going to be eligible to be on this list, but any cards that were reprinted that aren't already in the existing format are eligible to appear on this list. So another thing just to keep in mind as we go through this list. But going on to the first Pokemon of the list that we're going to talk about is actually going to be our pick for the worst Pokemon GX in the set. So one thing that is worth mentioning too is that you won't see any GXs or Ultra Rares on this actual list just because even the worst GXs that get printed are still typically better than your average junky, you know, random non hollow rare that you get in the set. So we're going to cover that just by itself. And of course, I think everyone assumed this would take the spot. It is going to be Palkia GX. It's a new Pokemon GX that came out of this set. Dialga GX got printed in here too, which I feel like kind of stole all of Pokemon's creative juices. Uh, they used up all of their good ideas on Dialga and Palkia doesn't have too much going for it. So let's look at it. it has 180 hit points, has three attacks, the first of which is going to be Spatial Control, move any number of energy from your bench Pokemon to this Pokemon, has Hydro Pressure for three colorless energy to 60, plus 20 more for every water attached to this Pokemon, and Zero Vanish GX for three water and two colorless, it does 150 damage, and you shuffle all energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon back into their deck. So if you look at all these attacks, unfortunately they are not... That solid spatial control, these types of attacks have existed in the game for what seems like forever, and they have never historically been good. You know, maybe there's one game out of a thousand that you play where you might actually find a use for the attack, but generally speaking, these attacks are pretty bad because you have to use this move as your attack for turn, and once you move all of this energy to Palkia, your opponent's just going to attack you on their next turn, which isn't very good. Hydro Pressure admittedly is a decent attack. We have uh, Keldeo EX in the past that had Secret Sword. It was the same thing but only 50 plus 20. But the downside to that is Palkia doesn't have the great ability that Keldeo had back in the day. And one th thing that's important to know, it's a Dragon type. It's not a Water type. So you don't have access to things like Aqua Patch and different water support that you know, a water type Palkia, which we are getting in the future most likely since Japan got in their SM5 Plus set. Uh, you know, it does not have all of the benefits that that would give you. So being a dragon type, I think is kind of the nail in the coffin for Palkia. It's also weak to fairy, so Gardevoir is going to be, you know, easily able to just run through this. Even things like Sylveon GX can knock this out in one hit if they choose to. So the typing on Palkia is absolutely horrendous. Uh, you know, maybe once the water version gets printed, uh, you know, Palkia might see some play, but just... Because it's Dragon type, I think that's the biggest problem for this card. And the fact that its attacks are all kind of mediocre don't really help the card either. Zero Vanish GX, also, it sounds impressive, but honestly, it's not too great outside of a few decks uh, in particular. So most of the current decks in the current format can either attack for one energy or they feature some sort of energy acceleration, making Zero Vanish GX not a very great G GX move outside of maybe uh, Volcanion. I think that could be... 
uh, one of the most popular decks that Zero Vanish could be good against, but if you're playing Water Energy already, you're probably playing other Water Attackers that can already deal with Fire Pokemon. So Zero Vanish GX, I just don't think this attack is that great either, and the insane attack cost of it only further hurts. And next up, we are also going to cover the worst Prism Star in this set as well. So like I mentioned with Pokemon GX, even the worst Prism Stars in this set are still better than your average non holo rare or uncommon card that you're going to see in Ultra Prism. So for the worst Prism Star from Ultra Prism, we have Giratina Prism Star. So it's one of these new Prism Star cards that came out of Ultra Prism. You can only have one of the same card in your deck, and whenever they get discarded, they go into the Lost Zone instead. So Giratina, it's a 160 hit point basic, which is actually pretty nice. You know, it only gives up one prize, has a tanky amount of hit points. But going on to the rest of the card, it has this ability, Chaotic Star. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may attach two Psychic Energy cards from your hand to it. So it's kind of like the Darkrai Prism Star that we got in this set, and also like the old Pachirisu back from the Heart Gold Soul Silver era. Uh, you know, you can play this card down, get some energy in play, and then it also has this attack, Crisis Dive, for 4 Psychic Energy, does 160, and you discard 2 energy from this Pokemon. So Giratina, honestly, this card, it's not even that this card is that terrible, it just doesn't have any super great partners to really put with it. So take the Darkrai Prism Star, like I briefly mentioned, it has the Darkrai EX that you can pair it with in both the standard and expanded formats, which is actually pretty easy to set up and get going, you do more damage for the amount of Dark Energy you have in play. Giratina doesn't really have anything that synergistic. Uh, you know, to really pair with it. it. has Lunala GX, which can move around Psychic Energy, so whenever you, you know, bench Giratina with some Psychic Energy, you can move it around with Lunala GX, but unfortunately, Lunala GX has not been historically a great card. It has some pretty awkward attacks, and so you have to run Lunala as a support Pokemon, then other attackers, then Giratina as another support Pokemon, and just in general, like I said, it just doesn't have any really great partners to really put with it. Now, of course, this can change over time. This ability, I think is strong but like I said it just lacks anyone to really partner it with and I don't really think you can really consider using this card for its attack either just because four psychic energy is a monstrous uh, attack cost you know if this was two psychic and a double colorless energy I would say you know what this card uh, you know it's not too bad you can sometimes attack with it but the attack cost is just too unmanageable currently I know we have some ex psychic I know we have some Psychic Acceleration looking forward into the future for Forbidden Light, but for right now, there's really nothing great to really pair this card with. But like I said, this could change over time, but as for right now, I just think Giratina doesn't have a home, which is why it's going to take our pick for the worst Prism Star out of Ultra Prism. Alright guys, so now we have our Ultra Rare picks out of the way, let's head over and count down the actual five cards. They're going to take the spots for the five worst cards from Ultra Prism. So coming in at the number 5 spot, we have a new Lopini. So Lopini, it has 90 hit points, it's a stage 1, fighting weakness, and one retreat cost, and it has two attacks, the first of which is called Stompy Stomp, which is kind of a cute attack name. Uh, but for just a single colorless energy, you flip two coins, and for each hedge, you do 40 damage. And then its other attack, Happy Turn, for two colorless energy is 60, and you may shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck. So at first glance, this card actually doesn't seem too bad, but the couple... So at first glance, this card really doesn't seem too bad, but there's a couple of things really going on that just really make me not like this card. The first of which is going to be Fighting Weakness, which is actually really terrible. Buzzle GX has been one of the most popular Pokemon in the current format leading into Ultra Prism. It remains to be seen how it's going to fare in the Ultra Prism format, but previously it has seen a monstrous amount of play. And so a Buzzle, which is a single strong energy, can just run through any low pennies that you might actually have. Uh, so just a single energy being able to knock out your attacker is not very good. Uh, so also let's go on to the attack Stompy Stomp. You know, on average, you're going to be doing just 40 damage, you know, unless you play something like the Victory Star Victini to maybe reflip some coins. But like I said, on average, you're going to be hitting for 40 damage, which is pretty unremarkable. And Happy Turn is actually, you know, not a terrible attack. You know, for a DCE, you do 60, 90 with a Choice Band for just a single attachment, which honestly isn't that bad. But then you may shuffle this Pokemon all cards attached to it into your deck. So there are some cute things you can do with this. You can, you know, put it back into your deck and promote something like a Hoopa or a Zerk Tree GX or some sort of wall Pokemon. Uh, so that is kind of a strategy you could go 
go for it. And those types of decks actually have done well in the past. We've had the old Dawn Fan deck, which saw a ludicrous amount of play. But Dawn Fan in the past just let you switch onto your bench. It didn't make you shuffle your whole evolution line back into your deck. So it makes streaming Lopenies and doing a deck kind of like that, I think a little bit out of the question. You know, at least on paper. Obviously, I have not tested Lopini. <laughs> There's much more important cards to cover. Uh, but, you know, I just feel like it's too hard to actually effectively keep streaming your Lopinis if you're doing this type of strategy. And like I said, if you do not shuffle this Pokemon into your deck, you only have 90 hit points. So you're probably just going to get knocked out. So, unfortunately, Lopini, not the greatest card. Like I said, it's, it's not the absolute worst, which is why it's the number 5 spot. But it's just a completely unremarkable card that is probably going to be forgotten about after the set releases. So next up, coming in at number four, we have Torterra, which actually hurts me to say because the Gen 4 starters, all of them are some of my favorites out of all of the different games that have come out, but Torterra kind of got the worst card out of all of the starters that got printed in Ultra Prism. So let's take a look at it. So it's a grass type. Stage two has 180 hit points, which I do want to point out is actually really impressive. You know, that's the same amount of hit points that a lot of basic GXs have. So Torterra, definitely a super tanky Pokemon, but has fire weakness, four retreat cost. Those things seem pretty expected for a Torterra, but has a couple attacks, has Giga Drain for two grass and the colorless is 50, and you heal from this Pokemon the same amount of damage you did to your opponent's active Pokemon. And then it has Earthquake, for three grass and the colorless does 180 damage and then you do 20 damage to each of your own bench pokemon so torterra actually you know just looking at these attacks 180 damage seems pretty good 180 hit points seems pretty good you know what's not to like well the big problem with torterra is its energy cost it takes just absolutely insane energy cost to actually pull off these attacks now granted we do have venusaur in the current format which will double your basic grass energies so that does make getting out torterra a little bit easier but you know that's two stage twos in your deck and also since you're not playing any real energy acceleration you're basically just uh, making your grass energies go a bit further if your only torterra that's powered up gets knocked out well guess what it's going to take at least two turns to set up another one unless you play even more energy acceleration like in the form of max Luxors or lorantis gx or something like that to maybe jump back into the game and get another pokemon set up uh, you know, a little bit quicker. But the energy costs are just really what's so terrible about Torterra. Its attack also does 20 damage to each of your own bench Pokemon, which is not very good. Now, of course, you can counter this by playing something like a Mr. Mime, but you're already playing two stage twos. You probably have a Lele somewhere on your board as well. Bench space seems like it would be pretty precious in this type of deck if you were going to build it. Uh, Giga Drain, also kind of unremarkable. Yes, with the choice ban, you are going to hit for a solid amount of damage. Uh, you know, and like I said, you have 180 hit points, so you can tank hits with this guy. But like I said, once your only Torterra gets knocked out, it's going to kind of be hard for this deck to just quickly recover from that. Also, you're very susceptible to things like ability lock, like Garbatox and Garbodor, shutting off that jungle totem ability, assuming you're playing Venusaur with Torterra. And, uh, you know, it has a four retreat cost, which is pretty monstrous as well. Granted, that does make a lot of cards in your deck searchable by Heavy Ball, which actually can be a good thing, but it definitely makes, you know, retreating Torterra very difficult. So, honestly, Torterra has some good things going for it. You know, 180 damage is solid, has 180 hit points as well. It's Heavy Ball searchable. So, like I said, has some good things going on, but its energy costs, I think, are just way too problematic and way too slow for Torterra to ever really be good. So coming in at the number three spot, we have Licky Licky, which is your typical junky bad rare that gets lumped into every set. Uh, so let's take a look at it. Licky Licky, 130 hit points stage one. So that's actually a decent amount of hit points. Fighting weakness, three retreat cost. Those things seem pretty standard for what you'd expect from a Licky Licky card. But has this attack, Dangerous Lick, for three colorless energy. And you flip a coin to get tails, does 50 plus 50 more for every heads. And if the first flip is tails, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. So basically you're guaranteed some sort of additional effect from this attack no matter what. And then it has Rolling Tackle for four colorless energy to do 110 damage. So like I said, looky looky, this is your completely just trash, junky rare that gets thrown into every set that you just, you, you're hoping to pull that Leafeon GX or that Glaceon GX from the set and then you get hit with a looky looky and your day is ruined. It's, it's that kind of card. So unfortunately this card is just not very good. Yes, you can play something like the Victory Star Victini to reflip some of these coins, 
but on average, you know, you're only going to be doing either 100 damage or 50 plus paralysis, which is not very good for three energy. Similarly, for an extra energy, doing 110 seems very bad as well. So looking at Licky Licky, you know, it does 110 for four energy, whereas you look at something like a Zorark GX that you could play instead, just for two energy, a single double colorless energy, you can hit for 120, uh, not counting for something like Choice Ban, assuming you have a full bench, of course, but you also have 210 hit points, you have a fantastic ability, so Licky Licky's attacks just aren't very good. Uh, some other uses, maybe for Dangerous Lick, though, you could potentially pair it with, what, Sea of Nothingness, I believe is the Stadium card back from Crimson Invasion, prevents your opponent from removing status conditions whenever they evolve. So that seems like you could try it with, with Looky Looky. Uh, you can maybe, instead of trying to do more damage, you're just trying to paralyze your opponent. But even still, that is pretty bad. We have things like Guzma to get out of the active spot. Um, you know, and 100 damage, if that is what you're, you're doing, is not that great either. So unfortunately, Licky Licky, all around pretty bad card. I would, I'd basically expect this card never to see the light of day outside of something like a pre-release. So that's why it's taken the number three spot. Coming in at the number two spot, we have another Pokemon with some ludicrous attack costs, and that is going to be Drapion. So Drapion, like Licky Licky, is a stage one with 130 hit points and three retreat costs. I think both of those things are fine. You have kind of a tanky amount of hit points, which is okay, I guess. Uh, Drapion, though, it has this single attack nothing else no ability no other attacks just this one attack for a monstrous four psychic energy you do a hundred damage and your opponent's active pokemon is now paralyzed and poisoned so the, the effect of this attack is actually very very strong auto paralysis is typically always a great great effect to have that's one of the strongest i think status conditions that you could have in the game so it makes sense that it's going to be a little bit difficult to power up but this thing is not a little bit difficult to power up. This thing is insanely difficult to power up. So for Psychic Energy, that's, you know, energy of debatably the worst typing to have since there's really not any great Psychic Energy acceleration in the current format. Like I mentioned earlier, we will have some new Psychic Energy acceleration looking forward ahead into the future. But for right now, we have nothing to really uh, work with this Drapion. Now, of course, you can use things like Max Elixir to Max Elixir onto your unevolved Skorupis before you get your Drapions into play, but that's kind of clunky. Similarly, we have Lunala Prism Star that can accelerate energy, but it's as an attack. And, you know, that's just not that great. And once your only Drapion gets knocked out, well, guess what? You suddenly have to power up another Pokemon with four energy somehow if you want to keep attacking. Uh, I will say this, there are things in the current format though, like Wishful Baton and EXP Share to preserve your energies in play, so that is an option if you are going to try to play Drapion. And in the expanded format, I will point out we do have a Gardevoir all the way back from Next Destinies that is kind of like that Venusaur we have in the current format, but for Psychic Pokemon, it doubles basically any Psychic Energies that are attached to them. So maybe in Expanded, you could try this with Gardevoir, but I would argue Expanded is a much more aggressive and uh, unforgiving format. So for Drapion, I don't really ex expect to stay around long enough to even attack in that format. So honestly, Drapion is just a terrible card. You know, like if it if its attack cost is maybe two Psychic in a DCE, that might be slightly better. Even then, it's probably not a good card. But it, it just takes so long to actually power up. And once your opponent knocks out one of these, it's going to take several, several turns before you get another Drapion powered up. And that's assuming your opponent does not play something like a Guzma to pick off your, you know, your next Drapion that you're trying to power up. So this card is just unfortunately pretty unplayable in the current state of things. Maybe if we had some insane Psychic Energy Acceleration, Drapion could be you know, uh, a viable card, but I just think for right now, this card just has way too much going against it. Its attack cost is just too too obnoxious. Uh, I just don't see a reliable way to power this thing up and keep streaming these throughout the course of a game. And coming in at the number one spot, we have our only trainer card of the list, and that is going to be Missing Clover. So if you guys saw our set review, I definitely uh, tore into this card a little bit and said how much I didn't like it. So if you guys want to hear even more thoughts about how bad this card is, definitely go check out our set review Ultra Prism as well. So Missing Clover, let's take a look at it. It's an item card from Ultra Prism, and it's one of these dual effect cards that we've seen in the past, like Puzzle of Time. So you may play four Missing Clover cards at once. If you only play one card, look at the top card of your deck. If you've played four cards, take a prize card. So that's actually kind of crazy. You have an item card that can net you prizes, which is 
you know, it's actually pretty cool. But the problem is you have to play all four at the same time, which is rarely ever going to happen, unfortunately. So if anyone out there has ever played with a deck that uses Puzzle of Time, you'll know how difficult it is just to get two Puzzles of Time in your hand at the same time. You know, even with playing things like Mallow and Zoroark GX and things like that, sometimes it's still hard to get both of them in your hand at the same time. So just think about how hard it's going to be to get four Missing Clover into your hand at the same time. So that's really why this card is number one. It's just going to basically never be able to be used. You know, maybe one out of a thousand games, this card will actually work how it's intended to work. Uh, you know, and also it wouldn't be as bad if the first effect from Missing Clover was actually useful, but just looking at the top card of your deck is rarely going to impact much. So really, you're only playing this card for the second effect, which like I said, is just way too hard to ever use. Now, of course, there are a few things in the current format that could aid in this. We have the new Oranguru that lets you put three cards from your discard pile on the bottom of your deck. So you could, in theory, you know, put three Missing Clover on the bottom of your deck, then draw them with Looker. Uh, that's one thing, but that's, you know, you're only getting three, which is nice, but you kind of are counting on having the other one, uh, you know, in your hand already. We also have Metagross GX, which can use Algorithm GX, it's GX move, to search out all four Missing Clover out of the deck. We also have, of course, like I mentioned, Zoroark GX, which is great at helping you draw through your deck and drawing into exactly what you need, especially in conjunction with things like Mallow as well. But overall, this card is just too hard to make use of. And I would argue if you're cutting four cards out of your deck for Missing Clover, you could probably just play four better cards to help you win and take prizes instead. Instead of counting on an item card to help you take prizes, just play good cards that are going to help you win the game. That, that seems like even better to me. So if you're not already playing four Puzzle of Time, I think you just cut four Missing Clover, four at the bare minimum, four Puzzle of Time, if you don't want to play anything else. This card is just so outclassed by Puzzle of Time and just other good cards that help you win games already. So that might sound a little bit hard for Missing Clover, but this card is just a complete meme it is not good don't play it it's not going to work uh you know i could be wrong i i definitely could be wrong but i would i'm willing to bet my reputation on it that this card is terrible and doesn't see the light of day again maybe some other sort of crazy search uh options we get in the future uh, but even then, I would still argue that there are other cards that you would prefer to search out of your deck other than Missing Clover. But anyways, guys, Missing Clover, like I said, it's going to take the number one spot on this list. And that's going to wrap it up for our top five worst cards of Ultra Prism. Like I said earlier, too, luckily, this set actually wasn't too bad and didn't have a lot of really, really terrible cards to uh, go over. But what do you guys think? Do you think I rated anything a little too high on this list? Or you think I was a little too hard on any certain cards or not hard enough on others? Definitely sound off below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. What are your picks for the worst cards to come out of Ultra Prism? Definitely sound off below and let me know what you think. But as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you for the next one.